Greetings and welcome back to Victoria 2. So I'm not sure if I did mention it in one of the earlier episodes, but uh, I am playing with a mod, as you uh, probably read in the title of the video, but uh, the mod is New Nations mod, and as you might expect from the name, it adds a whole bunch of new nations. Uh, the most visible ones are the ones in Africa. So usually Africa is very much empty. It's all uh, easily colonizable by the uh, Western powers, but uh, yes, so uh, the nation that I started off with, Oyo, is very new. The only nation over here that you actually have is uh, Socorro, and it's uh, somewhat smaller than it is back here, and maybe a few here and there, but uh, that's pretty much it. And apart from the visible nations, there's also a whole bunch of uh, nations that have been added in the form of cores. So for example, uh, what we have here, uh, we had the nation of Benin that I took over. Now, uh, they still exist in the form of course, and a lot of those have been added in the game as well, everywhere. And there's also a whole bunch of uh, emergent nations that have been added. So I think in total it's about uh, 200 nations in all shapes and forms, so that's quite nice. And additionally, it also uh, does a, a few small tweaks here and there. So. In the end, it still very much feels like a vanilla game, just uh, a little better. Okay, so, um, what are we going to do? I was uh, thinking about uh, doing some changes to the budget, so uh, I sort of forgot that uh, when I input some tariffs, that the effective tariff is very much lower than the uh, tariff that I set, simply because of my terrible administrative uh, efficiency. So I'm going to a bit. Also, all my people are, well, except for the artisans anyway, are able to get their life needs fulfilled, which is good. And the reason why they only get their life needs fulfilled is that most likely all the other uh, special luxury items and all that sort of stuff is unattainable because of my lower rank. Oh yeah, I gotta explain this as well. So, anyway, let's do the budget first. So, I'm gonna up the tariff. Let's set it to about... And let's start at about 40%. So, effectively, that uh, turns into 8% tariff. Uh, that brings me... Uh, uh, that gives me a whole bunch of money. Which is good. I might uh, up it later on, but for now it's gonna have to do. This also allows me to up the budgets for administration and military, which will be very necessary. Military spending will allow me to have more soldiers, 80% uh, for now. Let's put this one up to 60%. Well, that's gonna put me in the red, that's not good. Uh, okay, well, let's up it to 50% then. Normally this should work. <laughs> uh, okay. And another thing that I neglected to mention was that I did uh, say before that there were uh, three sorts of ranks. Like you had the great powers, the eight uh, most powerful ones. Then you had the eight secondary powers behind that. And there's uh, another distinction between uh, civilized nations and uncivilized ones. So all the civilized nations are ranked before the uncivilized ones. And this actually makes things quite interesting so uh, let's sort all the nations according to rank and here you see all the big western nations and if we scroll down we are rank uh, 78 we are right here and all the uncivilized ones are behind the western nation so luca which has a some small state in italy i think is the lowest ranked civilized nation so they rank at about 71. This means that the highest rank that I can get without westernizing is theoretically uh, 72. But, well, here we have an uh, empire of, Jap uh, of China, sorry. And uh, yes, this is very much impossible to uh, dethrone them from this rank because they have a huge, huge military. But the ones behind it are mostly satellite states or sub-states of uh, China. And these ones are actually possible to uh, get past. So if we look at my score, I have a 42 
Uh, this guy has a 43, 44, another 44. Then we go to 5, uh, 55 and 67. So all of these I could get up to rank 73. And that's the best I can do without westernizing. And also uh, Japan is going to jump over us uh, sooner or later because they can easily westernize. And yeah, so this means that no matter how good you do as an uncivilized nation, you'll always be somewhere in the middle of the ranks, which means that your population will have a difficult time getting uh, luxury goods and all that sort of stuff. But if we do take another look at our scores, we have a score of 42. Just hypothetically, imagine, uh, imagine that we do westernize right now, which we can't. Uh, let's go take a look where the score of 42 would end up at. So here we have rank uh, 49, uh, only has a score of 8. These are all very, very small states. 14, 19, oh, well, there we go, 42. And a score of 42 would bring us into the secondary powers, which is actually quite amazing. So this means that I don't have a lot to fear from any of the other nations. The only people that can really threaten me are the great powers and I guess the uh, secondary powers. Now they will start getting up in rank soon because they will start developing industry, which is something that I can do. So I would assume that once I can westernize, which will be in about, I don't know, 30 years or something, I hope, I'll probably end up at around uh, rank 20 or so, which will still be pretty decent. Right, well, um, let's continue. We're at speed 2 at the moment. I'm gonna have to check out my budget, make sure that it's that it doesn't crash. Okay, now we get a whole bunch from tariffs. Alright, that's pretty good. And as you can see, even with the tariffs, everyone except for the artisans are still able to get all their life needs. And you know what? I'm gonna drop all these taxes. They don't really give me much because there's not that many middle class and... Oh, well, we have a new upper house. Let's just put it to 5% to ask them at least something. Uh, we're making a bunch of money now, which means that I could up this budget. And I could, let's see what would happen. Okay, I'm still very much in the green. So yeah, I got everything set to 100%, which is good. I'll be getting quite a few new bureaucrats, which will make my um, government a lot more efficient. Also, it'll make my, my tariffs a lot more efficient, eventually. So, yeah, let's just uh, let this stick for a while. I'm also going to be getting quite a bit of money, and I'm going to be spending that on buying uh, goods from the world market. I'm going to be showing that stuff soon enough, because I haven't uh, bought anything yet. I'll be explaining how that works. So, uh, what else do we have to do? Okay, let's go uh, to speed 3. In the meantime, we're waiting for our... Uh, points here to accumulate so that we can get the flintlock rifles which will be a major change for my army because that'll make it so that especially with all the money that i'm getting i'll be able to possibly turn all of these irregulars into uh, regulars which will make my army very competent i'll probably be able to overpower anyone in uh, africa Especially since almost none of them have any uh, research done at all. Let's uh, take a quick look. Uh, where's the button? International crisis, interesting. Oh, oh well, let's pause for a moment. And, oh yeah, that's right, we got a new first minister. Let's take a look. Uh, again, oh, must be the same guy, I guess. Uh, minus infamy and more diplomatic points. That's... Uh, very good that's especially the sort of stuff that i need so just because of that uh, prime minister my infamy lowers at uh, twice the time it would normally and that's very good because that will allow me to make uh, a lot more claims on the surrounding lands 
Okay, let's uh, take a look at what we have going on. Uh, crises. They are. Okay, they wanna give back a province to Greece. Uh, we got Russia backing up Greece, and we got the British backing up the Ottomans. And all these people are still on the fence. That could get interesting. Let's continue. Alright, looks like people are all still reasonably happy. And uh, the National Bank is getting empty now, but for the rest. That's actually good because I want that money. And when I get enough money, I'm going to start stockpiling things. I'm also going to let them auto create leaders. I got plenty right now and I don't want to have to go back to it all the time. I don't really uh, care anymore. I have plenty of leaders as it is. So uh, this does go up and down. That's fine. Looks like we are able... Oh yeah, that's right. We are able to get this one. But uh, I don't want this one. I want flintlock rifles. Also, I'm not entirely sure of this. But uh, for example, I did mention inventions earlier. And let's take a look. Flintlock rifles. So here we see the inventions that could uh, be achieved. But let's take a look at the requirements. So we have a base chance of 5%. I'm not sure if this is per month or per year. I would sort of assume per month. Otherwise it would take me about 20 years to get that. Oh great, cholera spreads. All my people are dying because of cholera, which is terrible. So uh, if I do get this invention, and normally I should be able to, because it doesn't say that I can't, I'd be getting an extra buff on all my infantry that I would have, and even the cavalry as well, so that's very good. And the uh, reason why I think that I can get it is, for example, no, I can get this one as well. Uh, military staff system, yeah, this is the one. Uh, discovery of these uh, cavalry units, and it does say that the base chance is 2%, but it's minus 2% because Oyo is not civilized, which means that these... Uh, inventions are impossible, but uh, for this one, flintlock rifle armament, it doesn't say anything. So uh, we got no subtraction of chances, so that's good. That'll give me another buff, and with those uh, regular soldiers, I actually might stand a chance in fending off against some of the uh, western nations. For now we should be fairly safe. The scramble for Africa, which happens around... 1870 uh, hasn't happened yet, so this means that uh, we don't have a lot of presence of European nations down here. And by then I should be uh, reasonably powerful, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. So, um, let's take another look. 7,000 something, how, many, how much do I need? 8,000 and a half, okay. We'll get there eventually. And my uh, budget here are working nicely, although... Effective tariffs actually lowered for some reason, not sure why. But all is going well. I'm gonna keep it at 50%, I don't wanna set it too high. Actually, effective tariffs has gone up quite a bit. I remember when we set it to 10, it was only 2%, so it is uh, going up nicely. It also makes it so that we get more tariffs, obviously, but I might have to lower it a little bit later on. But uh, we'll notice it soon enough if these people start complaining. I doubt it. Nice thing about this is that we'll have a lot of money and we'll be able to afford... And why aren't you auto-creating? I can't even see anymore which ones that I recruited, unfortunately. Um... Crisis is still going. Interesting. Uh, let's pause for a moment. So, this looks like a nice one. We got Britain with the other ones, which is um, not a great power at this time, but uh, they, have, they are uh, quite powerful. They usually uh, lose their great power status because they lose a bunch of wars, and when you lose wars, you lose prestige, and also, temporarily, your military has been destroyed, so you lose a whole bunch of points, but Especially the military can be built up again, so you rise back in ranks, and 
uh, well, yeah, prestige you get back uh, bit by bit. But they certainly should be underestimated. So, effectively, Ottomans are still a great power when it comes to military. So we got Britain, Ottomans, Prussia and Spain versus the Russians, France, the Netherlands and Austria. That'll be interesting. That'll probably uh, crash the world market <laughs> if that war does happen. And well, it's nice to see that my artisans at least are able to get some goods. They seem to be recovering. That's great. Um, what was I gonna do next? Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> we got a huge war going on. Uh, this, uh, I think, is the first big war that we will be able to see. And also, uh, if you take a look here, you can see the total military strength, but uh, you can't really go forward on this number alone because let's uh, pause again for a moment oh well looks like Prussia has uh, something else on their hands uh, now this counts all the military strength but for a lot of nations uh, mainly UK and France for example uh, they have a lot of colonies and this means that they also have a lot of military that isn't in France or Great Britain itself and usually I go with about let's say that half their forces are really in their mainland this means that they are quite uh, weak down here uh, very much compared so to uh, Prussia and Austria who have all their forces on their mainland because they don't have any colonies this means that usually initially uh, the likes of Prussia and Austria will have the upper hand against the UK and France until their other forces can arrive to back them up and sometimes the war can be over be be uh, before that happens, so this will be very interesting. And it's lagging for some reason. I guess it's because it's on speed tree, but uh, I'm not sure if it did it before. I'm gonna check it out after this episode. So, um, also could be because we have a huge war going on and people are moving a bunch of troops. Uh, I was going to do something. Yeah, trade. Well, unfortunately, we got a big war going on. But, for example, here you can see uh, my government needs this. Is the needs of my soldiers, basically. And all I need at the moment is wool. Because cavalry and irregulars only need wool. And there's plenty of that on the market. But, uh, for example, if you were to buy more wool, uh, for the moment, everything is set to automate. So, the game or your government automatically buys whatever it needs if it's available and if it's not available then you won't get it that day but yeah it seems like there's a lot of wool but we could for example buy wool ourselves color of spreads damn it I'm losing people left and right actually my stockpile is empty because we might not be able to get any wool uh, what's this Europeans harassed Uh, foreign trading post from Lagos. Round up the usual suspects. Uh, well, no, I don't want to piss off the great powers. Let's round up the suspects. Alright. Now, it, it does seem like in the stockpile we got nothing. Normally it should say we have about this amount. But we can uh, get rid of automate and purchase ourselves. Let's say that we want to stockpile about, uh, let's say, 100 wool. It's very cheap, so that's not a problem. And it's set to buy. If we confirm trade, then we'll be purchasing wool. But unfortunately, we have a big war going on, and I think people are using up wool. So this is one of the reasons why you might want to stockpile certain things for your army, because if you're in a lower rank, uh, people might be buying up things in the higher ranks and you might uh, not have anything to give to your troops. Uh, what do we have here? Organic work. Uh, what's this? 
Uh, support the movement, farming efficiency, mining efficiency. Or not it's run it on course. Um, this one lasts uh, 12, 12 years later. Well, yeah, obviously, we're gonna support it. Uh, we gain a lot more consciousness, but I don't really care. But we lose militancy, which is nice. So let's support it. That'll give me more RGO output, which is great. And yeah, it looks like we can't get any wool. But the uh, other nice things to stockpile are ammunition. And mostly, you may want to stockpile them when they're uh, low in price. Uh, now they're going up slightly because of the big war going on. Also, small arms are required artillery, although I don't have any artillery myself, which is going up because of the war once again. And uh, let's take another look. Uh, canned food is another one, which is also going up because of the war. All those troops that used to be at peace uh, use up 50% uh, less supply during peace. So they've all gone to war, which means all the uh, demand has gone up, which means the price has gone up. Uh, foreign trading posts, uh, where? Worry. Uh, no, let's get rid of consciousness and militancy. Also, those trading posts do spread cholera. I'm losing uh, a lot of people here. So, yeah, unfortunately, there's a war going on, which means that it's uh, very difficult for me to stockpile anything at all, because demand has increased. Looks like I can make another general. You know what? I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to hope that the AI will create one. I did set create, right? How to create, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're getting a lot of money, surprisingly. Not sure why. During a war, normally you lose money i guess uh, it all depends on what sort of economy you have maybe i'm winning money because the demand has gone up for certain goods which is all good okay um also my infamy is sticking down now the highest infamy that you could get from a war certification was a uh, 22 if i remember correctly at least uh, for me anyway and to uh, annex a state so I'm gonna wait until it's uh, three or lower. Also, no, we're not there yet. We'll almost be getting the flintlock upgrade. So I gotta wait until my infamy is at least three or lower and then I can start a new war certification. Uh, not sure against who exactly. Uh, these people have uh, 500,000 people. So that's certainly a nice target. They also have coal, which is interesting. Calabar has a 200,000 and coal. And this place, the Honey, has about 200,000 and mostly farmland. And this reminds me, uh, we also had the situation in Sokoto. And when we go to the Ergio output, uh, most of their land is farmland, which is uh, relatively poor. And this means that basically Sokoto is pretty poor, especially compared to me. I have a lot of tropical wood and also uh, this place has a lot of cattle. If you click on this, uh, red means bad and green means good. So uh, the greener a province is, the more of uh, an output it has for uh, whatever it creates. So this means that uh, we have a reasonable amount in Benin. Most of his provinces are terrible except for these two with cattle. So I assume that these two provinces make him quite a bit of money. And for the rest, if we take a look at grain, all his grain provinces are dark red, so is mine. So the output is going to be fairly similar. And as you can see, my grain province doesn't make a lot of money at all. So his lands are very poor, which means that even if he were to re uh, research flintlock rifles, he can't support an army with all of that. So... At least I'll be able to get the upper hand that way. Okay, are we there yet? Almost. And how's the war going? Let's take a look. Um, it's this one. It's like uh, Britain and its allies are losing for now. Oh, they're actually almost at the war goal. Now let's pause for a moment and let's take a look at the situation. Uh, yeah, okay, so Russia invades Russia. Russia is a difficult beast. It uh, takes a time to start up. 
because well it's so big and by the time it gathers all its troops uh well yeah a lot of his land will be occupied but uh, once it does arrive it's gonna start uh, taking everything back and possibly invading prussia unless they can end the war before that happens so you gotta be careful with uh, counting on russia if it's a quick war they will never get to a point where they can contribute anything and over here we have well apparently uh, france invades england england invades france and here we have i think prussia is uh, taking over Elsass and all that sort of stuff and oh yeah the dutch are in it as well the dutch are invading prussia and wait a minute prussia and austria are on the other side oh yeah apparently okay that's nice so it does seem like uh, the russians and the rest will win which means that uh, russia will acquire Thessalia. that's odd okay we'll have to see how that evolves what's this anyway montenegro okay let's uh, continue we almost we might have enough points let's oh, i guess someone is going to war here uh, my ally actually i think yeah, he's at war he hasn't called me to war surprisingly oh well that's fine unless i missed the pop-up but i doubt it are we still allied yeah we are so i didn't miss the pop-up now uh, i think i have enough yeah there we go so imported weapons yes please okay and as you can see we're now at 10 percent into westernization i need 40 percent until i can get this decision at loyalty so that we can get rid of tradition which uh, seriously hampers my uh, research points so right okay i guess i'm gonna end the episode here and then next time we can start on modernizing the army and that'll be very interesting all right so anyway thank you very much for watching and see you next time